In the next few videos, we're gonna look at vibrational motion. And we're gonna take a moment to just sort of set up the problem before we actually start to solve it. So in vibrational motion, and we're gonna think about diatomic molecules because that's the simplest one that we can solve um, pretty easily. So if we have a diatomic molecule, um, so we have some atom with mass one over here, we have another atom with mass two over here, and we imagine that they are connected by a spring, so our bond is represented by a spring, then these atoms can um, vibrate by moving in and out. Notice that the variable that changes when we do this motion is the distance between the two particles. So if we place our molecule um, so that its center of mass is at the origin, and we'll talk about what we mean by center of mass. So we put um, the center of mass at the origin, then mass one is at um, x1, and mass two is at x2. Notice that x1 is negative. Um, and it's that difference between x1 and x2, r, is the thing that changes. This motion can be described by Hooke's law. So there's a restoring force that depends on the spring constant or the strength of that spring. So our bonds have different strengths or different spring constants associated with them. And then if that's the forces acting on the particles, that restoring force, then our potential energy is going to be 1 half kx squared. And so it's that potential energy that we're gonna use in the Hamiltonian in order to solve this problem. So in order to do this, since we have two variables, x1 and x2, we're going to um, change our coordinate system so that we do it in terms of r, so that we have a single variable that we are going to use to represent this system, and then we have a, a um, single variable differential equation, so it's an ordinary differential equation that we need to solve, which is easier than trying to solve a differential equation that involves two variables. So the very first thing we're going to do is do a change of coordinate system. And then we're going to use our potential energy to solve the Hamiltonian problem, the Schrodinger equation, to find our wave functions and our energies. And then the last thing that we'll do is to examine the, the um, solutions and see what we can learn from them. So there will be three videos in this series one where we change the coordinate system, one where we solve the Schrodinger equation, and one where we examine the solutions.